Hello everyone and welcome to The Everton Show. Straight away, many thanks for all the positive feedback we got from viewers who enjoyed last week's programme. We seem to go down quite well. As for tonight, this is what's coming up. There is a uh, amazing, uh, amazing years here. Um, I have to admit that uh, obviously the, the campaign for the FA Cup was uh, something special. It's a fantastic honour to have played this many games. There's a, quite a few in there as captain as well, so as you can see by my smile, I'm happy. It's nice to have kept a clean sheet on this occasion, but um, I say I, I intend to keep going for a little bit longer yet. He's a big, strong lad, and uh, he got tremendous pace for a big lad, I think. Uh, and uh, I just, I just hope he can keep going because he's going to be a great asset. You know, it's great to recognise what the players have achieved throughout the, you know, the previous season, and uh, you know, as you can see from the, the smiles on the faces, you know, they get a lot of enjoyment out of it. Great to see Louis Sahar at Finch Farm recently. Who will ever forget his cup final goal in 2009? Plenty more from King Louis later in the show. Well, alongside me in the studio tonight is one of our club ambassadors. A warm welcome to Ian Snowden. It's not since our last programme, away games at Swansea and Reading, and both went well. Both very positive results as well. Uh, it could have been three points easily at Swansea. Uh, I thought the boys played exceptionally well, second half especially. Should have been three points really, shouldn't it? Yeah, it should. We missed, uh, we missed a few chances. Uh, Rom will admit that uh, usually he'll put the chances that he, he got that day uh, away. But I thought overall, I thought the team, first half were quite even, but I thought second half, I thought we dominated the game. I thought we looked like the own team and uh, we should have gone on to win it. There's no question about it, that's. We deserve to beat Reading, didn't we? Over the 90 minutes. Yeah, over the 90 minutes. Um, first half, we're quite tight again. Went 1-0 went down. Uh, we did that at Barnsley. Went 2-0 down at Barnsley, but went 1-0 down at half-time. But then responded. The boss made a tactical change, brought Gareth Barry on, who I thought played very well for the second 45 minutes. And I thought we were dominant that second half, and uh, we deserved the victory, I felt, in the end. They were in good nick. They still are in good nick in the Championship. So it wasn't the easiest of draws for Everton. No, it wasn't. Uh, any tie away from home uh, is always going to be a difficult game, but uh, they made changes. We made five changes. They made, they made eight, um, and it shows that they've got a good squad as well because they thought they adapted and played quite well. But overall, yeah, we deserve to win. We, we're marching on to the uh, fourth round now, and uh, who knows, fingers crossed, we could be at Wembley. <laughs> Let's look back, hopefully, when we do get to Wembley. Well, if we are to achieve anything in the Capital One Cup this season, the signs are that we'll be doing it the hard way. Coming from a goal down at Reading didn't shred the nerves as much as the two-goal deficit we had at Barnsley. But in any cup competition, it's simply a case of getting through to the next stage. Here's what Roberto Martinez made of it all. I thought they played really, really well. And it was a little bit of an unknown, um, as much as it was for us, for them as well, because... A lot of new players with a lot of quality from Olegion, Piazon, uh, Hurtado, uh, players that probably haven't played too much, uh, Alex Fernandez, but they gelled really well. I thought they were very good on the ball. They created problems. They scored a very good goal. And then it was about our reaction, our character. I thought in the first half we, we couldn't, maybe our shape didn't allow us to have enough possessions to open them up. I think the second half uh, changed a lot. I think we we found a way to, to break them down and it's always always difficult to get back into in a scoreline like we did and uh, many, many, many positives from Leon Osman uh, completing 90 minutes, uh, Ramiro Funes Mori that I thought it was um, pristine with his performance, uh, Gareth Barry coming on and being ready for a big impact, um, obviously Adam Lennon playing a different position and having a fantastic attitude, Gerard De Lofeo completing 90 minutes and getting the winner, I thought all in all the, the performance was very professional and and we got through into the next round, something that we know is not, is not easy at all, so we, sh we shouldn't take it for granted. Adam Lennon's work rate in the strange right-back position was relentless, wasn't it? It was, it was, and I think it shows the experience that he has. He's, he's, he's always, even at his incredible um, moment of his career, ready to, to experiment, do different things, and I thought he was probably the, the difference today. He allowed us to have uh, a lot of freedom for Gerard De Lofeo in the 1v1 situations. He got into good positions and, as you say, the work rate, the, the way he defended, it was a, a real um, uh, a real example of performance for every everyone else in the team. Another cracker for the Ross Barkley collection. Absolutely. Yeah, I think you get you get used to it now. I think Ross is, a, is, a, is in his 100 games for, 
for our football club and uh, an incredible uh, highlight and his overall contribution was more than just uh, a good moment in the game. I thought he's got an incredible maturity and uh, it was it was a, a, a real class act throughout the game. 4,000 Evertonians, Roberto? Yeah, no, the, the support was incredible. That's why it's, um, it's so important for us to be consistent with our performances. And it's not easy. And you get different type of um, uh, different type of opposition, different type of games. And I'm just pleased the, the way that we adapted today and what we had to do in the second half was, was very pleasing. And it's all for our support. It's incredible. A Tuesday night, uh, so late in the evening to have that sort of support, I think is, a, again, a, a real celebration of our football club. No, you must have been very impressed with the way Aaron Lennon performed. Yeah, I was quite surprised when I saw the lineup. I uh, saw Aaron on the right hand side and Murray on the left hand side full, as full backs with Jags and Stones uh, centre half. So, but uh, I tell you what, Aaron did exceptionally well, as the boss just said, um, to adapt to that position the first time he's ever played there as well. But what Aaron gives you is that experience, but he also gives you his work rate as well. And uh, he works relentlessly on his loan uh, spell last season. We could see that uh, he helped Seamus Coleman out on numerous occasions. So, no, it didn't surprise me his, his level of performance at right back. Might surprise me a little bit, but uh, as we say, I, I think he's a, a great player for Everton Football Club. His work rate is fantastic. I think to go through that conversion from midfield player to right back, you've got to be a special talent, haven't you? There's not many done that, does? Uh, <laughs> I know I did in, in 88. Uh, but, Were you uh, happy to do that? I was, just to play in the team. Uh, I wasn't doing myself justice in midfield at the time. Uh, Colin Harvey brought Stuart McCall in and uh, Neil MacDonald, unfortunately for him, came from Newcastle and he didn't settle in quite uh, quickly. Uh, and Colin just asked me to play right back again. I'd never played there, but I soon settled in there and uh, I totally enjoyed the uh, role. But putting a blue shirt on, no matter where you play for Everton, that's all that matters. How many games did it take you to really adapt and really feel comfortable? Only a couple, only a couple because I had the experience of Dave Watson and Kev Ratcliffe at centre-backs telling me what to do and I had the quality of Trevor Stephen in front of me, uh, which was a massive help. So, uh, yeah, I adapted quite quickly. So did Aaron Lennon. I'm not sure we'll see him there on a regular basis, though. Well, Aaron himself has already played in a Capital One Cup final, of course, for Tottenham Hotspur. And he's appeared in a couple of World Cup tournaments as well during his career. But until Tuesday of this week, he'd never played at right back. But I tell you what, you'd never have guessed. Uh, we worked on it a little bit towards the back end of the weekend and a little bit yesterday in training. So I had a little inkling and then early on in the day today, the gaffer told me that how he wanted me to play. And um, so, yeah, that was it, really. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, it was. It's, uh, first few minutes is getting a bit used to it, but um, once the game got going, and I think especially second half, we got into it more. Um, now I enjoyed it. Yeah. Certainly didn't look as if you'd never played there before. Uh, yeah, I had um, Stones in well in the first half and Jags behind me, um, constantly communicating and, and speaking to me. So they made it easy for me to be fair and uh, Jerry in front of me, so I could just give it to him and let him get on with it. <laughs> We're making, a, we're making hard work of this Capital One Cup lot this year, aren't we? Doing things the hard way. Yeah, I think these games are always difficult, especially away from home. Um, uh, the lower team is ready. And like I said, they're a good side, to be fair. They're doing well, going well in the Championship. And, um, and they raised the game against us. And um, like I said, they was decent tonight. But once we got to grips with it, I think, like I said, second half was in control of the game. Gareth Barry came on at half-time and he just gives you such an, such an assure and such a calmness, doesn't he? Yeah. Now, Gaz is brilliant. Um, his understanding of the game, his positional play is brilliant. Um, even for me, he was always there, an option to just to give it to him. And um, yeah, but once we got that extra midfield area, it's the uh, guys. Um, that's how I think we took control of the game. And Ross Barkley doesn't score tappings, does he? Nah, like I said, <laughs> uh, he's got great. Like you see, his technique tonight is unbelievable. Both feet, either foot. He does it in training all the time. He's working on it every day, and um, it's no surprise when them goals go in for us now. We just say well done. <laughs> and Jerry at the end, probably their goalkeeper won't be too pleased, but Jerry still had to hit the target from 30 yards. Yeah, it's, it's still a great strike, yeah. And um, to be fair, he was working on it uh, yesterday in training, so he's got that, that awkward technique. The goalies don't like it. And like I said, the goalie probably was a bit disappointed, but we'll take it. It's a good goal, good strike, and um, nah, great goal for Jerry. You know what it's like to reach the final of this tournament, Aaron, and it's all about just getting through to the next round, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Um, like I say, some people think these games are easy coming away to Reading and going away to Barnsley in the last round. They're never easy. And uh, like you said, it's just about getting the win. Um, and like you said, and sometimes a bit of look at a draw as well. Um, be good to get a home tie next. But like you said, the, the team we have here and the squad we have, um, like I said, I think we can go a long way in this competition.
Just finally, Adam, what about the supporters? Almost 4,000 at Reading on a Tuesday night. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. Like, if we come out, and I just heard <laughs> the, the, all the noise, and I looked up, and I, we had the whole stand there, and uh, yeah, it was unbelievable. And that's what you need as well. They don't realise how much they help us. Um, like you said, especially when we won no down and they're still singing, and then nah, they was, it was unbelievable tonight. So now Zaron Lennon said he wanted a home draw in the fourth round. He certainly got that. Norwich City. Yeah, I'm quite pleased with that. Um, I'm not sure whether Norwich will be, but uh, I'm sure the Evertonians are. I'm sure the players are. On tie. Um, we've avoided the big guns as well. Uh, the Arsenals, Man United, Man City, uh, Chelsea, etc. So uh, there's no reason why we can't progress. As, uh, I think it's a decent draw. Norwich at home. Could have been better, could have been worse. And that brings us to the end of part one of this week's Everton show. After the break, we'll bring you the skipper, Phil Jagielka, on a point at Swansea and a personal milestone. And we look at the under-21s match at Manchester United and also the Everton in the Community Disability Football Awards. Welcome back to part two of the Everton show. The goalless draw at Swansea City last weekend marked the 300th appearance in an Everton jersey for Phil Jagielka. The skipper drew level with Edgar Chadwick and Sammy Chedzoy in the all-time list and he gave us his reaction after the game. We had a few chances, they had a few chances first half especially, so as much obviously as we'd like to have won, uh, like I say, a clean sheet's a, a, good, a good result for us and you know, a point keeps the momentum going. It seems to be the same after every game that people are saying, yourself, John Stones, Tim Howard, key men at, at the back. Are you pleased with how that unit's playing at the moment? Yeah, definitely. You've also got to you know, throw in the two young lads either side. You know, Ty's had a tremendously hard job today, did really well. And um, Brendan, as he usually, usually does, gets stuck in, had a great game. So um, I say the back four is a little bit different to, to what it has been in previous seasons and things like that. But he shows that the squad's got some young talent and some depth. And um, it's up to us, sort of experienced ones. I'm putting probably John in the experience category now, um, you know, as fathers and parents and stuff, to help the, the young lads uh, around us. But, you know, delighted for them as much as anyone to keep the clean sheet, and hopefully that'll build a little bit of confidence. You mentioned Tyus's performance. Does that make these clean sheets all the more impressive that the defence does keep changing, that it, it hasn't been the same for, for every game? Yeah, definitely. It was a tough afternoon. I, was, I kept on reminding Ty, you know, we've kept it nil, we've kept it nil, you know, that's our job done. You know, he's playing against um, you know, one of the best wingers in the, in the Premier League when he's on form and you know, thankfully Ty can go home tonight with a smile on his face knowing that we've kept a clean sheet. He's making his first start for Everton but you're making appearance number 300. I'm sure you've been asked about it plenty of times this week but just how proud are you to, to reach that milestone? Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's a fantastic honour to have, have played this many games. There's a, quite a few in there as captain as well so as you can see by my smile I'm happy. It's nice to have kept a clean sheet on this occasion but um, like I say I, I intend to keep going for a little bit longer yet, so hopefully you can you can interview me for uh, 350 or 400. Well, the manager just said, and he, he said in the week that he thinks you're getting better and better and better, and that there's many seasons left for you to come. So, as his captain, how does that make you feel to hear him saying those words? Well, he's got to say that because I've got at least two more left, so uh, we'll have to wait till he gets a bit closer to that time to see if he still thinks that way. Snod's 300 appearances for the Blues for Jags and you can count on one hand the amount of bad games he's had. Yeah, I can't speak highly enough of him, Daz, to be quite honest. Um, no matter where Jags has been asked to play early on in his Everton career, right back, centre midfield, but as an out-and-out -out, uh, centre-back, he's getting better. Uh, the boss is right, he can go on for another few years. He seems to be getting quicker with age as well, so uh, he reads the game so well, he uh, is dominant in the air. And I think he's been fantastic for the last couple of seasons. Just how good has Phil Jagielka been for John Stones? I think he's been good for everybody, but John in particular, because John come as a young boy from Barnsley, uh, inexperienced, not had much first-team uh, experience at Barnsley as well. So to come in and uh, play alongside Phil Jagielka must be fantastic for him, because Jags is always talking. A lot, of, a lot of fans have said to me he's not the most boisterous on the pitch, but... You see Phil Jagielka and he's always communicating with his back four and uh, that's what he's got to look after. You've got Gareth Barry and experienced players like that to look after each other further up the field but he looks after his defenders, he looks after his full backs, his, his fellow centre half and uh, that's a great help to the, the rest of the back four. Leads by example doesn't he Phil Jagielka. Well, the Everton under-21s have made a decent start to their season, but they came up against an informed Manchester United earlier this week. The Blues gave a decent account of themselves, but the Red Devils just had too much on the night. Here's the best of the action and the views of David Unsworth after the game. 
Everton under-21 suffered a 3-1 defeat to Manchester United on Monday evening. The Young Blues fell behind to James Weir's strike on 17 minutes after the Red Devils played a neat 1-2 on the edge of the area. The hosts doubled their lead six minutes later when Josh Harrop won possession and the ball was collected by James Wilson, who finished well past Matthias Huelt. Jesse Lingard made it 3-0 ten minutes into the second half with a crisp side foot finish before Everton mounted a comeback late on. After Sam Johnston had produced fine saves to keep the Blues at bay, John Joe Kenny's right wing cross found ahead of Callum Dyson on 78 minutes, the striker finally breaching the United goal. It was too little too late, however, leaving coach David Underworth disappointed despite an improved second half showing. Yeah, a disappointing first half performance um, and a missed opportunity for, for a lot of our players to impress a lot of people who were watching. Um, so that that's that's a that's the most disappointing thing about the about the night's nice, uh, nice work. We finished the game with the goals. Do you feel we improved in the second half? Yeah, I thought we were terrific second half. Um, but unfortunately, you can't you know you can't keep keep giving teams leads um, because Man United are a good team, so they'll 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 capitalise on that. Um, but again, we showed a great reaction. We we played some better stuff, scored a goal, um, created numerous chances as well. Um, but unfortunately. You know, at 2 0 down and, and going 3 0 down, the, the game's over. Snodsunzi there, clearly disappointed at the performance and the result. He'll just have to hope that the young boys will learn as much from the defeats as they learn from the wins. Yeah, certainly will. And I'm, I'm sure Unzi had a little bit of a goal at half time and he said the second half performance were better so that at least they picked something up in his team talk at half time. Uh, but I've watched them under 21s quite regular and we've got some talented players uh, and they're learning along the way as well. The main aim is. For them players to play well at under 21 level and when they progress and go up into the first team and train with the, with the first team in that environment is to perform there. So uh, yeah, he will be disappointed in the result but it's the performances that David will be looking at individually as well. In the previous under 21 game we had Darren Gibson, Leon Osman, Joel Robles, even Leandro Rodriguez in the side and they'll have been missed surely. Yeah, they will, uh, but there's sometimes as well that you don't want the experienced players around you because the youngsters are a bit more enthusiastic. But uh, yeah, Darren Gibson and Ozzy were coming back from injuries, uh, needed some game time as well, so it, it's vital for them as well. And, it, and it's great for the youngsters to have that experience around them as well to talk them through the game. That's what they need to learn. Well, they're learning quickly at under-21 level and they couldn't have a better tutor, could they, than David Onsworth, doing a smashing job down at Finch Farm with the young lads. Well, back in the under-21s team for that game with Manchester United was John Joe Kenny, the young defender who's been on loan at League One outfit Wigan Athletic. John Joe slotted seamlessly back into the Everton lineup, and he spoke to us after the game. Disappointing, really. Um, first half, I thought it wasn't good enough. You know, even the second half, we still come out, we didn't, we done OK, but, you know, it wasn't a good performance tonight. Just tell us about your, your two months on loan at Wigan. We've uh, had good reports. Yeah, enjoyed it. Loved every minute of it, you know, playing in front of crowds, playing for points. You know, it's a great experience for me to have for them two months, yeah. I spoke to you in pre-season, you were itching to get away on loan. You, you wanted that opportunity and you got it. Yeah, uh, you know, I come back from Singapore with the first team and got told I was going the next day, so I was buzzing really. I was just waiting for my chance and hopefully I've took it. Has David Unsworth, Joe Rowe been in touch while, you, while you're at Wigan? Yeah, they come to most of my games and you know give me a little bit of advice when I'm doing well or what I need to improve on. So, you know, it's good having Unzi and Joe Rowe around. You only finished playing for them on Saturday. You were straight in another 90 minutes tonight. What's, what's Sonsi said to you since you've been back? No, he just said come in and you know I want you to play centre half. You know, I love playing for Everton. It doesn't matter if it's any age. You know, I play. Um, so I just thought I'd just come and do a job for the team. Hmm. Improved that. Moved to right back. Got across him for the goal. Yeah, you know, I'm not a right back life, but you know, as Undy said, he needs me centre half, so I'll fill in centre half. What was it like playing in League One? Physical? Yeah, very physical. You know, it's a lot more physical men than all men. Um, you know, it's about running. It's not really much about football, and it's about getting the game, getting three points, and moving on in the league. Looking ahead now, what, what's next for you? Uh, I think I'm still just going to stay here for a bit, try and get a few more games, and then try and see. If I can get back out on loan again, you know, because I loved every minute of it. So, but, you know, I've just got to be patient and, you know, see what can see what happens. I suppose it, it, you've proven, as well as the other lads that have gone on loan, that you will take those opportunities if you get them. Yeah, of course, you know, a few lads have, who've played tonight, you know, have gone on loan and everyone's itching to get out on loan, you know. Playing man football, I don't think you can get much better, so, you know, everyone's just striving to get on loan. 
Well, from the under-21s, we move on now to our disabled football teams. Everton in the community fully deserves its reputation as being the best in the Premier League when it comes to disabled football. We have teams across all disabilities and the coaches and the participants make us all extremely proud to be blue. And none more so than when it's time to hand out the trophies and the medals that the teams have won. It was my privilege to bid the Isla Gladstone in Stanley Park recently to host the 2015 Everton in the Community Disability Football Awards. Always it's a pleasure coming um, and help the people in here and also involved with day and, and it's very nice. I'm very happy with when I, I am involved in that and I hope so continue because it's very important for, for Everton and also for, for, the, for the community. It's great to see uh, the kids smiling, putting plenty of work in, plenty of effort, turn up every time they're asked to turn up and uh, they deservedly get a medal at the end of it and there's some successful teams in this uh, Everton Disability Awards team so uh, yeah it's a privilege for us to be here this evening. It's no different to, to the first team you know you still got to put the effort in to get the rewards and you know they, they train every week you know they play every Saturday or Sunday and you know and they're clearly doing it very well because they're picking up plenty of trophies from what we've seen in there as well and some good individual talent in there as well and some real characters as well we've seen that tonight as well in abundance there's one or two cheeky chappies out there I'll tell you so you know they've they richly deserved their rewards tonight and I know that they're gonna have a really top evening we've got uh, 10 teams at the moment that represent the club but um, you know we'll be expanding on that um, but the, 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 and they train and play uh, in local leagues, regional leagues and, and national leagues. Uh, but that's only a small part of the programme really. Uh, you know, we go into all the Hay Hospital every day, working with sick and disabled children on the wards, you know, just um, trying to put a smile on the face really. Um, we also have a schools programme where we go into a lot of special schools and uh, mainstream schools with disabled kids in. Uh, and work with disabled kids in the schools because a lot of the time they get excluded from PE so it's important that we go in there and, and support the teachers to enable to do inclusive um, sports sessions. Snods, that was a special night wasn't it? Yeah, a lot of parents came up and said thanks for me, Brian, Oviedo and, and Graham Stewart being there but let me tell you it was the other way, way around for us. Mm. It was a privilege to present them kids with their medals and uh, me, Graham and Brian hopefully put a smile on their face. They were fantastic. Special kids, special representatives of Everton Football Club. Well that wraps up part two of the Everton show. We'll take a break for a couple of minutes and when we come back we'll have an entertaining and in-depth interview with our former striker Louis Sahar. <laughs> Welcome back to part three of the Everton Show. This is the segment where we show our big interview, and this week we've got an FA Cup final record breaker. Louis Sahar already had a big reputation when he joined Everton in 2008, and he showed his genuine quality time and again in the Royal Blue jersey. None more so than in the scorching Wembley heat when he scored in the 2009 FA Cup final after just 25 seconds. Louis was back at Finch Farm recently to look back over his Everton career. It's uh, always a nice period, you know, you see the, some old faces like the Tony Herbert, the Osman, the Jagirka, you know, Benji and all that. It's, it's just uh, a club that you have very fond memories and uh, I, I like to come back and I don't see much changing, but uh, the, the, yeah, the spirit is remained and it's good. When you look back on your time at Everton, what are the things that stand out? What are the highlights? Um, there is a, f yeah, a amazing... Uh, Amazing years here. Um, I have to admit that uh, obviously the, the campaign for the FA Cup was uh, something special, but you had some great games uh, against Chelsea actually, great games uh, against any team because uh, it's always hard to play against Everton, so it's always a pleasure to be uh, inside that, uh, that squad. When you think back to that afternoon at Wembley, that first 24 seconds couldn't have gone any better for you, could it? I could. Um, we'll have better with uh, a late winner, uh, so I don't really care about uh, uh, how fast uh, we score goals. Um, so it was great because uh, I think it's uh, a great moment for the for the fans to be in the final, to be in Wembley, to be all, all that. Is, it was great, but um, yeah, I still uh, got that uh, frustration feeling. You'd swap it all to have lifted the cup that afternoon, of course. 
that Blackpool game as well, I guess that's one that stands out. Four goals at Goodison Park. Uh, you have to remember me that, you know. Uh, yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a game uh, that you remember because you you're playing well and uh, it was very exciting for the fans because we're losing down and uh, come back to a game like this is just amazing. That uh, it was pretty much for getting a, a three four days uh, days off. So. <laughs> Just going back to that Wembley game, the atmosphere that day was incredible. How did that compare to some of the other games, the big games that you played in your career? It's uh, that motion, you know, when you go and prepare for such an uh, occasion, you make sure that uh, every uh, every component is here and you know that uh, you're facing a great team, you know that uh, you will have uh, your full support of your your fans and uh, and. You know, as a as a competitor, you always think that it's possible, and you always like uh, start a game with a lot full of confidence. And uh, yes, the reality of things, it's like uh, it's hard. You know, football is hard, and uh, you may want uh, as much or more uh, competition or lift the trophy because that's what I wanted when I came here to to be one of the few to lift the trophy. But it wasn't to be, so I was uh, really gutted. Um, it was very, very emotional because I, I hate to lose, but uh, to lose in the final is always, uh, yeah, really hard. Who do you keep in touch with now? Then anybody from the time that you were here that you're still friendly with? Yeah, you know, uh, I used to speak uh, a lot with uh, Sylvain. Uh, he left the club, so yeah, it remained uh, very important uh, here. Some players like Benzi, like uh, Jagirka, those those players are uh, uh, try to keep in touch. Uh, obviously. Uh, it's not um, it's not easy with what I do. I'm always on the move. So, but uh, yeah, yeah, I'm concerned about what uh, is going on in the Everton ground because uh, it's part of my history as well. Yeah, so you still keep an eye on the games. What do you make of the team under Roberto Martinez? Yeah, it's uh, some changes since uh, his arrival. Uh, got a different style. Very positive. Um, it, it was a, a surprise to to some of the players. Uh, he managed to. To get a first very good season, and then a bit more difficult last year. So what I see is like I see a stronger squad. Uh, I see uh, uh, Ross Barclay uh, getting bigger. Um, yeah, it's, it's for sure that uh, now with uh, with uh, Romolu uh, up front, it's uh, it's uh, amazing uh, uh, power that you have up front. So yeah, it's, I'm impressed. Obviously, uh, it's all about. Uh, Getting to uh, to Europe, getting to s such places, and that's that maybe uh, what uh, need to be uh, need to be done. What do you remember about Ross from your time here? How big was he when you left? He was big, but uh, I couldn't remember that uh, he was that strong. You know, uh, I don't think that uh, the size of uh, his t-shirt is right. Uh, should change for uh, <laughs> a bigger one. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's huge, you know, and uh, the, the talent uh, that he had uh, when he was young uh, is here. Um, obviously, he needs uh, a bit more, um, I, I think, uh, certainty in his game, know exactly what to do, uh, when to do it. Those, those things come with uh, with games, so hopefully it will, uh, it will improve because he's got such talent uh, for, for Everton, but for England as well. Are you surprised at what he's done so far, or did you always see that talent was there and these are the type of things that he was capable of. Yes, yeah, uh, it's a uh, huge potential, as I said. So I'm not surprised. Uh, what it, what he shows is like you have to do it uh, week in week out, and this is the the mission for every player. And uh, especially when the intensity of the game is so high, you know, you may have like a, a spell of, of games you're not performing well. So that's maybe the the thing that he needs to address. But he's he's uh, he's doing well. Uh, he's still young. Still got a lot of uh, things to to learn and. Uh, I'm confident that uh, the club and Martinez will do whatever for, for him. And you mentioned Romelu Lukaku as well as a striker. What do you think Rom has to offer? Yeah, it's uh, as I said, he's a, he's a unit. Uh, it's huge, and I think when he decides to play to his full potential, it's uh, impossible to to defend against. That's the that's the reality. The, the the thing is like you sometimes think that. Yeah, there is some games he, he he's not playing at his full potential, so it happens to anybody. So to say that to 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 him is uh, yes, yeah, so about work hard, uh, train hard, and make sure that uh, he he do feel full uh, his potential because he, he could be one of the best uh, who is not uh, already uh, showing that. Uh, so he, he should address. Uh, 
what I uh, miss. When you look around the Premier League, and he's only 22, at that age, do you see any other strikers that are like him? There is a few players, but you have not to forget that uh, there, there is players abroad as well, so it may come uh, at some point. You know, you, are, you should not sleep, you know, you should not uh, uh, look at your uh, you know, competition or something like this. You really have to focus on your potential and work as hard as possible. You know, you have to go in the gym, you have to, to do the, the, the dirty stuff, you know, the thing that is not pleasant, but uh, you got a massive reward after that. So it's, it's uh, yeah, that's an example that I have with uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. You know, when I look at it, it, it was a huge potential, but Every day was the earliest, and he was leaving the uh, the latest one and uh, doing his thing uh, at home as well. So you could see that why he's scoring that many goals now and and doing it uh, season after season. And I guess you'll know Aaron Lennon from your brief spell at, at Tottenham. Do you think that's a, a good acquisition for Everton? Yes, it's a, it's a special player, uh, someone who, who is like uh, really bold. You know that he's going to perform. He's going to do his stuff. Uh, winning uh, a full pace is uh, almost impossible to follow. So you you have a lot of crossing that uh, Romalu will uh, will get uh, into. So yes, it's um, it's, a, it's a great uh, great lad as well. So it's good to have him in, in the dressing room. Very very stable in his uh, in his ways, you know. So uh, yeah, it's a great great signing. He was some centre forward, Louis, wasn't he? Still looks in good shape now, doesn't he, he as does well? Me. He still looks as though he could play now, but uh, yeah, he, he had everything. He had pace, he had the ability in the air, he got a great spring, um, good control. I just wish we could have, as Evertonians, seen a lot more of him. Uh, he didn't play a lot of games, or I mean, just more as he should have done does because of his injuries, but when he did play, he certainly knew where the goal were and uh, he, exc he excited many Evertonians. You must have played with players like that. He had a few bad injuries earlier in his career, Louis, so he had to be 100% fit before he'd go out there, whereas other players would be settled for 60%, 70%. Louis had to be 100% fit, and to a certain extent, given the injuries he'd had, you can understand that. Yeah, you can, you can, but uh, I can't talk about injuries, the, the amount of time I missed through, through injury, but yeah, mine were quite serious injuries, but I would always, if asked to play, if you were 70, 80, 90%, you, you would want to play, you'd play anyway. But uh, yeah, Louis had a lot of niggling injuries that I felt if he did play, he'd aggravate him, mm. and he didn't want to do that. But when, it, when he certainly played, he, he lit up the, uh, the Everton strike force. I thought he was uh, very difficult to play against as, a, as an opponent. He, he, he was a top, top player. Did he score too early in the FA Cup final snods? It was a long way to go to hold out against Chelsea. I tell you what, wouldn't it have been lovely if he'd have scored with 25 <laughs> seconds to go to uh, to lift us that trophy? Uh, there's never a, a great time or a wrong time, I should say, not to uh, not to score a goal after 25 seconds. I tell you what, I, he got me off my seat straight <laughs> away. I thought, I'm dreaming here. This could be it. This could be when Everton lift the silverware at last. Uh, but it wasn't to be. The, I remember the weather that day was absolutely baking. I felt sorry for one or two of our players because Chelsea started to dictate play, get on top, and I think they deservedly came out winners, really. But for 25 seconds, we all dreamed that it could have been our day. Louis was thoroughly professional in his outlook. He probably picked up those habits at Manchester United under Fergie because Tim Howard and Phil Neville, who we both got from, mm. from Manchester United, were exactly the same. Yeah, anybody who's, who came under Fergie's regime, you're talking to Scholes, Beckham, Giggs, the two Nevilles, uh, Louis worked under him as well. They, I thought they were brought up right. I think he, he kept them on the straight and narrow, uh, told them if they weren't doing something they should have been, uh, shouldn't have been doing, he'd either clamp down on that straight away. So I, I think the upbringing for any Man United youngster at that time would have been important. And uh, he certainly knew how to conduct himself around the football club, did Louis Sahar. It's never too early to pick up the correct habits, is it, as a young footballer? No, you've got to pick up the right habits. You've got, you'll have got you pick up many habits throughout your career, but if you can throw the bad ones away and keep the good ones, you'll have a successful career. Who did you pick your good habits up off? Uh, there were quite a few experienced players at Doncaster. Um, Leeds, when I moved on to Leeds, we had one or two uh, experienced players. There. You, you always listen to, hopefully, the manager giving you good thoughts, but mainly the experienced players. 
Certainly do. It was certainly good to see Louis Sahar back at Finch Farm as well. Lovely guy. Well, it's time for another tea break now, but don't go too far away because coming up in the last quarter of the Everton show, we'll be looking ahead to Monday night's Premier League trip to West Bromwich Albion. Welcome back to the fourth and final part of the Everton show and after three unbeaten Premier League away games with three clean sheets thrown in for good measure we go to the Hawthorns on Monday night to face West Brom Snods. It doesn't matter where West Brom are in the table, the Hawthorns is a tough place to go. It is and especially with a manager in Tony Pulis, uh, we know he has his teams organised, fit, uh, they'll be difficult to beat and yeah, Hawthorns, it's... I used to like playing there as a player, to be quite honest. Uh, there'll be a great following as well, as per usual, of Evertonians that will be travelling down. We'll sell our allocation out, there's no doubt about that. But it will be a tough game. It will be a tough game. West Brom are in decent nick in their last three games. Well, after the Capital One Cup win at Reading, we spoke to Roberto's number two, Graham Jones, about the challenge that the team will face when they visit the Hawthorns on Monday evening. I mean, we've had some good results in the last couple of seasons while we're at Everton. I think we drew 1-1 one -one and beat them 2-0 there last year. But we know it's going to be difficult. Tony's got them keeping clean sheets. So I think we know the task, but we're looking forward to it. Any team that Tony Pulis puts out will be a challenge, won't they? Yeah, because we've, we've faced his, his Stoke side and his Crystal Palace side so often down the years and there's never much in the games. and It's always decided on one moment normally a set piece from their point of view <laughs> but no no but it's a it's a good game one we're looking forward to I think we're in a we're in a good good vein of form on a on a back of a you know a consistent run of results so we're looking forward to Monday the away form has been fantastic hasn't it so far this season on all fronts yeah I think in the Premier League we've not conceded a goal which that would be nice to continue in the cup I think we'll like to give people a head start and then <laughs> get stimulated but I mean uh, Away from home, we've had some great results, so please we'll continue that tonight. The away support can make a difference, and our away support is incredible. It is incredible, um, especially I was I was obviously involved in the warm up, taking the warm up tonight, and I looked round and I thought they can't be all Everton, <laughs> and obviously we filled the whole of the uh, behind the goal, which is at the certain moments in a game you need your supporters, and I think our supporters are really intelligent. They know when. I think Gerard De La Feo won a corner and all of a sudden they, they um, got to their feet and started becoming louder and after that we gathered a bit of momentum, we got the two goals and we won the game and that's how important it is. The away allocation for the Hawthorns is completely sold out, that doesn't surprise you Graham, does it? <laughs> no it doesn't, I think we've, uh, we're the best supported side aren't we away from home which is such a great thing and we'll need them again on Monday night. He keeps a low profile Graham Jones but I, I like listening to him. Yeah, he's a great lad. Uh, my brother, Glenn, has a lot to do with him. He's been on coaching courses with him. He played for Doncaster as well, did Jonesy, so uh, we have a bit in common as well. But no, he's a great lad. I think he's had a couple of opportunities to leave Roberto as well and go into management. I know Swansea at one stage fancied him strongly to get the job, but uh, he's always shown faith. He's always wanted to stick by Roberto, and I think they make a great pair. Decent sense of forward, wasn't he? He was. He was. He scored goals uh, quite regular, put himself about as well, had a good touch, so uh, yeah, he went bad old Jonesy. You mentioned our away support there, it is astonishing isn't it, you and I are running out of things to say. I get a buzz about it, no matter how the players must feel when they come out of the tunnel area and they, they see the opposition end and they see it full of Evertonians week in and week out and it, it does, it gives you a massive lift as a player when you go away from home, anywhere in the country and you hear all them Evertonians and they're all clapping and singing your, your names and singing Everton, it, it's a Massive, great feeling, does. Roberto's been in charge for 53 away games. Now, we've won 19 and lost 19. That's a very impressive record, and I'm sure the punters play a role in that. It is. It's a very impressive record because, obviously, you like to you like to clash your own ground, your own games as a fortress. You want to win the majority of your games there, but to win 19 and just lose 19 away from home is fantastic. And you're right, it does boil down to the supporters getting behind them. All right, there's one or two bad results when you have a moan at them, and you expect that, but the majority of the fans get behind the, the Everton boys, and it's a great lift for them. The Evertonians certainly enjoy their away days, whether it's in the UK or abroad. They thoroughly enjoy themselves and fortunately the team tend to do the goods on their travels.
Well, Derek Temple scored 83 goals for his beloved Everton during a career that saw him win the First Division title and the FA Cup, thanks largely, of course, to his own winning goal against Sheffield Wednesday at Wembley in 1966. One of football's genuine gentlemen, Derek has been speaking to the Everton show about the current team, current form, the impact of Ross Barkley this season and his own memories of playing against West Brom. Well, I think uh, overall uh, they've, they've, they've done very, very well. Um, apart from the first game where they didn't seem to be with it, really. You know, I mean, uh, what, uh, Watford uh, made it hard for them, I know that, but Everton should have beaten them, really, un under normal circumstances. And if they'd have played that day like they are playing now, there wouldn't have been any problem. But uh, So I think... I think uh, I'm quite happy with uh, nine points out of these games so far. And uh, they're starting to show a little bit now. So far this season, Ross has got three goals as well. Have you been impressed with the way Ross has started the season? I have. He's, um, he's starting now to mature. And uh, I think uh, he's showing his true potential now. And I, I hope he keeps it up. You know, he, he, he started off with a big bang, but then dipped in form. And... Uh, it is difficult, he's only young, uh, but uh, if he keeps going, he'll, he'll be a top, top player, no doubt about that. And you look at all the goals that he's scored so far this season, he's won against Watford, he's won away at Southampton and just the other night in, in the cup match, they've all been fantastic strikes. Yes, yeah, well he's capable of that, you know, I mean, he's a big, he's a big strong lad and uh, he's got tremendous pace for a big lad, I think. Uh, and. Uh, I just, I just hope he can keep going because he's going to be a great asset. How do you see that the game going this weekend at West Brom, shall we? Uh, well, now then, West Brom are in a little bit of a sticky patch, and uh, if we go there with our strong team out, you know, we haven't got any injuries. Uh, I think as I can see us coming away with at least a point, uh, and it's not a bad ground for us, really. Uh, history tells you that so uh, at least a point and uh, I'd, I'd, I'd like to think we'd get three we've been fantastic on the road so far this season in the league we've not let a goal in well that's true uh, sometimes uh, when, when <laughs> it's a funny thing but you know the pressure's off you when you're away from home it's uh, you're expected to do an awful lot at home and uh, the crowd can go quiet when it's not happening and that affects the players, you know. And then once they get behind them again, you can see it lift the players and they start playing again. So uh, the, the spectators are, you know, and the, the supporters are in very important. What are your memories of games against West Bromwich Albion and in particular trips to the half arms? Uh, well, I can remember we, uh, we went to... West Brom in 1963, I think it was. And we, um, uh, that was a game where we clinched the title, I think. Uh, we, had to, we beat Fulham in the last game. I think, I'm not sure whether it was the next to last game. Memory isn't that great. <laughs> but uh, uh, that was, they, they were happy days. And uh, we used to get results then. You know, at, uh, as I say, the Hawthorns wasn't a bad uh, ground for us. And they, they, they had a very, very good team in those days. But um, so... Uh, I, I can't remember all the results, but I, I can remember us getting some decent results there. And what about your, your tussles with the likes of Jeff Astle and, and Tony Brown? Well, I, uh, I mean, I didn't tussle with them. I, I, the, 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 uh, they were always a handful for the likes of Brian Lebone, Jimmy Gabriel. Uh, but, uh, you know, they, they, they were good players. Tony Brown uh, scored a lot of goals, I can remember that. And Jeff Astle was a handful uh, as a centre forward, but uh, uh, I think um, I think overall, as a, as a team, we we were probably just ahead of them. Snods are referred to Derek Temple as a genuine gentleman. There's no other way to describe him, is there? <laughs> it's great meeting your former teammates that you played with uh, down the line played with many great players at Everton and it's great meeting them but it's cr also great meeting the players from the 60s and the 70s that have played for Everton and let me tell you he comes across as the nicest person you'll ever meet he's an absolute gentleman and he's always got time of day for you and I make sure every time I see him I go over and speak to him because he's a fantastic fantastic fella
He's such a humble guy, isn't he? You'd never dream he scored the winning goal for Everton Football Club at Wembley in an FA Cup final. You wouldn't. You wouldn't. Um, there's a lot of people come up to ex-players and say, great, oh, can you remember that game? Can this fella won the championship and he scored the winning goal in the FA Cup. Don't come better than that as an Evertonian. And he, he is, he just takes it in his stride. He don't think he's done anything untowards, but he's, he's created a lot in Everton's history and he wants to be proud of that. And it, it's great knowing him. You touched upon Ross Barkley there, mm. who's been in sparkling form this season. When I first saw Ross Barkley at 14 year old, I thought, wow, this kid is going to be special. At 16, I were asking David, not asking him personally, but asking the question, of David Moyes, why why isn't he playing even at 16? Because I thought he was good enough. And yeah, you could see some flaws in his defensive duties and David might have perhaps been a little bit worried. But overall, Ross Barkley is now playing at the top of his game. He's an international and he's a quality, quality player. And I'm sure there's more to come from Ross for club and country. And that's just about it for this week's Everton show. My thanks to Ian Snowden for his usual entertaining contribution and to everyone else who's played a part in putting it all together. Thanks again, by the way, for all your feedback. Please keep it coming. It's very much appreciated. We've enjoyed your company again this week and we'll be back in seven days' time when we preview the Merseyside Derby. We'll see you then.